More on taking control of managing your files with Jeff Carlson. This is Mac Voices. Mac Voices is supported by Notion. Do your most efficient work with Notion projects at notion.com slash macvoices. Welcome to Mac Voices. This is the talk of the Apple community, and I'm Chuck Joyner. This is the second part of our interview with Jeff Carlson, the author of Take Control of Managing Your Files, second edition. We continue our discussion of iCloud and how it compares to some of the other online services, and also get into exactly why you need to be careful when using certain backup services and why. Let's go back and let Jeff do the talking. And unfortunately, it seems like in the tech world, and maybe especially with Apple, maybe because we pay so much attention to it, but once there's a little a little hiccup somewhere, then you think, oh, well, I'm not sure it's reliable. And yeah. it's, I'm like you, it's been a while since I've heard any significant iCloud issues. I mean, I, there might a very, 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 very occasionally be an outage, but shoot, there's mm-hmm. an outage... There's an outage with everything, including my power company, every so often. So, you know, totally. that, that just kind of goes with the territory now. But I, I, I personally feel like iCloud has become a much, a much more robust system that Apple clearly is paying attention to. It's no longer off to the side. It's, it's front and center, if for no other reason than just because of the ecosystem between the Mac, the iPhone, and the iPad. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, the the Files app initially was really, really pretty basic. And, um, you know, it's it's not going to replicate the Finder. Um, It's not trying to do that. Uh, But, you know, it it has a structure and it has a way to, you know, use Spotlight Search on the devices to find the things that you want. pretty easily. So they've, they've, they've come a lot more closer to parity in terms of organizing files on all the, the three different systems. And, you know, it, for somebody who does have stuff in iCloud Drive, that makes a huge difference to me because there's a thing with, with file management, and I, I talk about this in the book too, which is you have to kind of have a mental model of, of where things are. And, you know, like the the example that I use, imagine that you're walking into your living room. It's late at night. Uh, You don't want to turn on the lights because uh, you don't want to wake up anybody or wake up the dog or whatever. Um, Most likely you can get into that room and make your way to your bedroom or the kitchen without turning on any lights because you know where things are. And, you know, maybe you'll, you know, uh, hit something with your foot, maybe, you know, a book fell off the couch or something, um, or, you know, a chair got moved a little bit, you might bump into it. But basically, you know where things are. And the idea is that when you're dealing with your files, you don't want to have to walk into that dark room and say, all right, where do I start? How do I find something? And so, you know, all right, I know that my photo active files are in this folder in the iCloud Drive folder, and the most recent episode is in this folder, and so I can just kind of go boom, boom, boom and know exactly where I am. Or I can bring up numbers and you know see like the recent um, the list of recent documents and go right to that and see the schedule. So that kind of stuff. So building a system for yourself that makes that possible means that you don't have to spend a whole bunch of energy trying to find something. You can get right to it and do the thing that you wanted to do. Jeff, one more thing, and this one could be a whole a whole show in itself. In fact, it could be yeah, yeah. three three shows. But um, in relation to to file management, are you an advocate of tags? Ah, that's a good question. I think tags are a fantastic idea, and I find that I don't use them very often. Um, and and I think a lot of that is just muscle memory. Um, but and it, it, <laughs> this is kind of ironic too, because when we talk about like photography, I'm I'm an advocate for keywords, which are 
basically tags for photos, right? Um, but I think maybe because I'm more of of that that visual model that that this is the place where these things are located, that I don't tend to use them a lot. Now that being said, they can be really powerful, especially actually cross platform because. You can have a project um, like uh, I have a sample project in the book um, that's talking about like building a jetpack, and so you know there's a tag called Rocketeering 101. It's like a you know a, a class, um, and so I can tag a whole bunch of different things and then do a search for just that tag, and in, in the Files app on the iPad. You literally have like in the sidebar, there's a column for tags and you can just tap that and it'll just bring up all the things with that tag, regardless of where they are, uh, you know, as long as they're in the drive somewhere, they'll show up. And that can be a really good thing if you are, you know, good and consistent with your tagging. That can be a really good thing if, say, you know, you have like a new version of a project, but you have a whole bunch of image assets or, um, you know, sound files or whatever that are already stored somewhere else. And you don't want to bring over, you know, possibly gigabytes of, of new stuff to put into that folder. Or you have something that, like, let's say you have a, a, a logo that might get changed and that needs to change everywhere. You want to make sure that you are uh, using the correct version. Well, I mean, it's really easy to get 20 versions of that logo scattered throughout your hard drive on the various different projects that have needed that logo. If you have a tag on that, then that will help you just know where that logo is. And so you can place that into your document. And it's not, you're not having to make a new version to put in your folder that's next to your pages document or your InDesign document or whatever. So to answer your question, they're a great idea. It doesn't quite click with the way that I work, but that also kind of points to the fact that everybody has different ways of working. So uh, yes, they're great. No, I don't use them much. (laughs) I, you know, but I like the I, I like the, what you said because it points out something that I think a lot of us, as we learned about tags, it was either one of those all. It, it felt like an all or nothing thing. Mm-hmm. If you don't do it, it's going to be useless. If 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 you don't do it for everything, it's going to be useless. And yeah. I, you you bring up a really good point that it may it you may be able to implement it just for certain things, maybe for certain projects, maybe for certain types of things. I, I, I'm I'm trying to think of a really good example, um, but I and I don't have one. But just you know something as simple as just one particular project that may have a lot of assets or things that are going to be scattered all over your your drives or your devices. So mm-hmm. it's. Yeah, it, I'm, I'm like you. I think it's a great idea. I don't use it. You just maybe open my eyes to the fact that I can use it a little bit and still have it be effective. Um, it, yeah. For, for things that like, I mean, maybe like a really, like a 25-star photo. You know mm-hmm. that, that 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 you might have just a handful of 25-star photos in your library, but you want to be able to find them. You know, and, and yeah. that that's where tags, and I'm, I've, of course I'm exaggerating, there's not such a thing as a 25-star rating. <laughs> there should but, be. <laughs> yeah, but but you, you get the point. You know, that there's yeah. that maybe that, that photo is important enough to me. I know I'm going to want to find it again. I will give it a tag. But the photo I took of what I had for lunch yesterday, okay, you know, yeah, I'll, I'd like to go back and find that, but it's not really yeah. going to kill me if I don't. Yeah, I mean... That's clearly a twenty-three star uh, yeah. uh, photo of, of, of lunch. Yeah, <laughs> my well, lunch but, was probably but actually, negative I, five. Yeah. <laughs> negative. Yeah. But th- I mean, you actually bring up another thing that I want to mention about the book um, is that you know, like, like we've been talking about, sort of you know, big topics, collaboration. Um, that there's also like a, a new section on um, like securing your files using uh, encryption. Um, you know, because sometimes you you have files that you just don't want anybody else to see, sensitive financial information, et cetera. Um, but 
a lot of 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 what we're dealing with too is just little changes that Apple has made in the operating systems that affect all this. So um, one of the biggest things that's that's new in this book, and it 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 doesn't seem like a big deal until you run into the this as a problem, is that in um, like a, a later build of Monterey and uh, in macOS Ventura, so the current operating system, Apple changed things under the hood about where these cloud services should live. So, for example, before Dropbox would just be in your home folder. You know, you'd have your your documents folder and Dropbox and pictures and all of that. Due to system architecture and I think security reasons, Apple basically built this new framework that all the cloud companies have to implement. And so, like, for example, uh, we'll use Dropbox as a really good example. They kept popping up little notifications saying that that it needed to be updated to run correctly under macOS uh, Ventura. And honestly, because I was busy with things, I just clicked like, all right, dismiss, 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 Um, because like it was still working and I I just didn't have the time for it. Um, But, you know, at some point, maybe with the next operating system, that's going to break. And so you have to, you have to implement it. But what it does is it puts all of the, the, the Dropbox folders in a hidden folder in your library folder. So, so all that stuff is not immediately accessible in the way that we used to do it. Now, it'll put an alias to that folder, and due to some sleight of hand, when you're in the Dropbox folder, it looks like you're still in your home folder. But it it doesn't quite. And if you have some things that are dependent on those specific paths, so for example, I use the app Hazel, there's a section on Hazel in the book. Hazel's amazing where you can automate uh, file actions. Um, I use Hazel to, like, for example, when I download um, when I download a new PDF from the, from the take control site, uh, it gets put into my downloads folder and then uh, copied to my take control folder just so that I have an easy access, and I know where all those those PDFs are because, um, you know, spoiler, there's a whole bunch of Take Control books and they're great resources, and even as an author, I reference them all the time. Um, <laughs> so having this Hazel rule run uh, just puts it so that I know exactly where I'm going to find those. Well, the Dropbox folder was no no longer technically specifically in the same path. So I had to do a little bit of editing to point it to the new location. If you didn't know about that, then suddenly, you know, you get an error or suddenly, um, I, I mean, the most, I think, obvious uh, byproduct of this is in, the, in a finder window in the sidebar, Dropbox would just show up as like one of your favorites. And now it's like way down in a um, locations subhead. And so it's still there, but it's not there. And if you have that subhead uh, hidden, then suddenly you're like, where's my Dropbox folder? Where was I able to, you know, th- th- this thing that I, my muscle memory is open a new finder window, click Dropbox in the sidebar, see all my files. Now it's not in that space. So what do I do about that? So the, there are a few things like that that are covered in the book that are, you know, they're not really exciting features, but they're things that that if you run into on the problem side, uh, you you don't want to run into it. And, 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 you know, just knowing how this works and how to work around it. Today's Mac Voices is supported by Notion. Do your most efficient work with Notion projects at notion.com slash Mac Voices. Getting work done can feel impossible some days, and it goes beyond work to your personal tasks as well. Projects usually mean task tracking in one place, writing docs in another, and setting goals in yet another. All that switching takes time away from actually getting things done. Today, I'm excited to share that Notion has just launched Notion Projects, 
which includes new powerful ways to manage projects and leverage the power of their built-in AI features too. Notion Projects combines project management with your docs, knowledge base, and AI, so you can stop jumping between tools and stop paying too much for them too. I've worked with lots of project management options, and I found Notion to be both intuitive and complete. And the last thing I need is another system that has a huge learning curve. I was up and running with Notion in no time. I bet you will be too. Do your most efficient work with Notion projects. You can try it for free today at notion.com slash macvoices. That's all lowercase letters, notion.com slash macvoices. When you use my link, you're supporting my show. Go right now to notion.com slash macvoices. Thanks to Notion for supporting Mac Voices. And, and I love the fact yeah. that, that you aren't just covering just the, I mean, you're t- talking about the Apple devices, of course, but you're not yeah. just covering the Apple services, that you're you're integrating things that all of us use, you know, or, or at least a lot of us use um, for, yeah. you know, managing files, moving files around, storing files, accessing files. Um, mm-hmm. So that's, the, you know, good, well, good job. And, you know, and- yeah, and one thing to add on to that, and I mean, you and I can never have any conversation that doesn't involve backups. That's just the rule. Um, <laughs> one of the one of the side effects of this is um, Dropbox, because I don't know they're crazy. Um, the The default behavior of Dropbox now is that all your files are stored at Dropbox, but not necessarily local, and um, you know what that means then is it looks like your files are there but it frees up a lot of space on your drive that's good and if you need a file you click it it gets downloaded there's a there's an iCloud feature that's similar to this um, it gets downloaded and then you just open it and it's fine before Dropbox would basically everything in your Dropbox folder would be stored on your local machine and also stored up in the cloud and Now the default is everything is stored up in the cloud and you grab things as needed, which is fine if you always have an internet connection. Um, But what that means is all these files that are actually not on your hard drive, they just have little temporary placeholders. And so it looks like the file is there. Well, having the mechanism for having them download like like that's that's no problem when you're actively using it to a backup system what you're backing up then are all the little temporary files so you can run into a situation where you're like oh no no i've i've got my time machine backup and you go back and you don't actually have that file let's say the connection to dropbox is severed for some reason or you're out of internet range um you know all you have then are those little useless uh, you know, stub files. So, you know, being aware that that isn't an option and knowing how to make files permanently stay on your, your uh, computer, that's also covered. But you might run into that. So, you know, it, it, it's just, like I said, you start getting into little tiny details. Um, I mean, I, I will admit, when Joe first approached me about doing this book, I was like, Okay, well, files and folders, yay, and use Spotlight, yay. <laughs> uh, I like it. Didn't seem like there was going to be much there, but there's actually a lot there. Um, Apple has done, you know, many things to try. I mean, tags and uh, you know the comments field, um, Spotlight, all sorts of things you can do with Spotlight that I think most people don't even know about. Um, you know, making smart folders, that kind of stuff. You, you start hitting these things and it becomes more complicated and that's pretty much where take control thrives because you you realize that there's a lot going on here and either you can do more with what you know and maybe make things easier or you can pull yourself out of a mess because you've realized that you've got duplicates everywhere and how are you going to deal with it and you need to bulk rename a bunch of files and are you going to do that one at a time well no there's a few different things that a new section in the book that talks about how to you know bulk rename files so you know there's just a lot of stuff that 
is surprising to me even as I was writing this. And so you figure that that a lot of people who are coming to this just like all I want to do is find my stuff. And that turns out to be a much bigger question than uh, than people expect. The Dropbox story comment scenario is worth the price of the book. <laughs> yeah. It, the, I mean, if I, I understand why they did it. And in, in a world where we have, it seems like, smaller and smaller standard hard drives, because yeah. we've gone to SSD that are faster and faster, and you want the speed. Um, it 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 makes absolutely perfect logical sense. But if you get on a plane from the east coast to the west coast, and you've got four hours, and you're going to get a lot of work done, and you find out that those files are not accessible, you want to strangle somebody, or yes, or, or <laughs> totally, a plane or something, and. Yeah, so you know that's that's a that's a prime example of why you need to pay attention to some of this stuff because things have evolved, and there's some good reasons for their evolution. Oh yeah, you better you better recognize that that evolution how it affects the way you work. Jeff, we could we could go on and on and on. I know, but <laughs> you know we could start out with page one and go through the end. But um, <laughs> I want folks to go to takecontrolbooks.com, buy the book, study it, read it. You know, if not from cover to cover, just start picking out random things that can can make you more effective and more productive, and maybe save you from jumping out of that plane. Um, <laughs> Definitely. Uh, what's the pricing on this book? It's obviously available now. Um, what's the pricing on? Yep. It? Uh, it, it's available now. It's a fourteen ninety nine, and I believe it's one hundred and forty nine pages. I'd have to go look again, um, but so yeah, I've, it, it's it's bigger than the last edition. Um, and if you own the previous edition, you can sign in to the Take Control website, and there's some special pricing. Um, I, I, I'm not sure if it's staggered for when you bought it. I don't know exactly how that's set up, but um, if you do own the first edition, definitely sign in and see what the options are. Absolutely. Absolutely. So again, takecontrolbooks.com for this book from Jeff, from all the other great Take Control authors, all the other books Jeff has authored for Take Control. Um, these are one of my favorite ways to learn and catch up. And now, especially after this conversation, I'm really looking forward to uh, learning what Jeff advocates uh, for my file management and how much stuff I'm going to have to change. <laughs> in, in the name of keeping up and being more productive. Yep, yep. So, Jeff, thank you so much uh, for the time and for the book. And, um, hey, we will be talking to you again soon about another one of your projects. Yes, looking forward to it. Um, hey, before you go, let folks know yeah. where they can find you and fi keep up with everything. You mentioned Photoactive, uh, and I want to make sure mm -hmm. that folks know where they can find that. But you do more than just author books and articles and f photographs and everything. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I have the great privilege of being able to do a lot of different things, which is great. Um, I think the, the main uh, location for me would be jeffcarlson.com. Um, you can find me on Mastodon at, at jeffcarlson uh, at twit.social. Um, but I think if you do a search for at Jeff Carlson, that's, that's where you'll find me. Um, I do, I co-host two photo podcasts. One is photoactive, which is photoactive.co. And the other with Mason Marsh is photocombobulate at photocombobulate.com, which is the most fun you're going to have typing a URL today. Um, or of course you can just go to jeffcarlson.com and, and get links to it. Um, but I, I do photography. Um, I, I'm on glass at, at, at Jeff dash Carlson, I think. Anyway, go to jeffcarlson.com. You can see links to all the things you can see, uh, stuff that I've done recently links to my current books. Um, I'm currently, uh, let's see, I recently had a, a a, an article come out in DP Review, which has surprisingly not shut down yet, even though they said they were going to. Um, so, yeah, that was a whole lot of whole lot of talking to just say, go to jeffcarlson.com or send me an email at jeff at jeffcarlson.com. <laughs> Great. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. We'll talk to you again soon. Okay. Folks, I'm Chuck Joyner. This is Mac Voices. Every time we take to a 
talk to it. Take control author. I tell you to go but get the books. I really mean it. Though. Um, and this one, this one especially because this is one of those topics that relates to everybody, no matter which device or which devices, which Apple devices you use, and maybe even which third-party service you use. You use. Can't talk today. Until the next time, and as always, thanks for watching. Visit macvoices.com for show notes and to connect with Chuck on social media. Get involved in our Facebook group or like our Facebook page and get more out of your Apple tech with Mac Voices Magazine, free on Flipboard and on the web. And if you find value in it all, consider supporting us through either our Patreon campaign at patreon.com slash macvoices or by making a one-time donation via the PayPal link on our front page and in the show notes of each episode you will join these fine people who help bring you Mac Voices. Advertising handled by Backbeat Media at backbeatmedia.com. Bandwidth provided by Cashfly at cashfly.com.